The Norfolk Broads, as you can see behind me here, is this incredibly beautiful space. We have over 11,000 species here, and that represents about 25% of all the rare and endangered species found anywhere in the British Isles. I'm here today with the Norfolk Wildlife Trust to see how through their Tipping the Balance project they plan to restore this area back to the pristine, beautiful habitat it once was. Kevin, you're Head of Nature Reserves for the Norfolk Wildlife Trust. What is the issue here? I mean, from my perspective, it looks all right. We should now be sitting in crystal clear water. We should be able to see the bed of this very shallow broad. The water body here is too full of uh, green algae and this green algae makes the water murky it means the sunlight can't penetrate down to the bed of the broad so any plant seeds that are in there which if they got the sunlight would grow just simply can't get away basically we need to remove this algae how do, how do we go about doing that what's the solution so there is a, a well-established uh, practice uh, to clean this water up uh, called biomanipulation sounds like a big word basically it's it's just managing the environment and managing the life that's here we're going to re distribute the fish that are here to get more of a natural balance, allow the zooplankton, the small water fleas and things, to grow in this water, which will then eat the algae, clean the water up, the water becomes clear, get that sunlight down to the broad bed, and then away go the plants after that's been established for a little while. We now have to meet Emily, who is the reserves monitoring officer, and she can show us what can really happen when you separate a broad and put biomanipulation into practice. Hello. How are you? I mean, it's quite clear there's lots going on in there. What have we got? Here we've got what's called holly-leaved naiad, which is actually a red data book species and is a priority species for us. Um, and these sorts of species you wouldn't find um, in polluted waters. These are species you'd typically find in unpolluted waters. And we've also got loads and loads of invertebrates that you can see sort of diving around in there. And this is all because the water's clearer? Exactly. I actually um, took some water samples, one from Ranworth and one from Cockshoot, and you can see here the water clarity. The and difference so is, this is amazing. Ranworth, and yes. This is from just here. Yes, yes. So the reason we've got the water clarity here um, is because Cockshoot Broad was actually biomanipulated in the early 1980s. Mm -hmm. and, and what this has involved is actually damming up the dike network and completely stopping any fish, any water movement from any bodies of water outside of this area. And what was then done is the fish were actually removed from the broad. Really what it is, is the fact that you've got the clear water um, that means that the light can penetrate to the bed um, and all that seed bank which has been here historically has then been able to thrive and that's why we've got the diversity of aquatic plants and you've got the really nice margins here as well. At Cockshoot we were able to isolate the entire broad but at Ranworth this would be difficult and at Barton impossible because of its direct connection with the river system. So this project will create three new giant biomanipulation bays in Ranworth and replace three ineffective barriers at Barton Broad, with the largest bay created at Ranworth unique in that it will actually be connected to the dike system and River Bure. So Andrea, Barton's a really good example of how biomanipulation can mm. work, isn't it? It is. So over the last 20 years or so, um, we've been trying biomanipulation in, in Barton Broad. We got an engineer and they designed a barrier for us. It right. floats at the top with yeah. a little float in a cuff mm -hmm. and it goes all the way down as a solid curtain, if you like, right. and it moves with the, the water and it's got a heavyweight chain through the bottom of it. So it's absolutely solid and we took out fish on one side and moved them to the rest of the lake. Right. So it's just a temporary removal. And with that, within three weeks, we got clear water. And then after three years, we had 15 species of plants. Yet those barriers have been in for 20 years or so now. Mm -hmm. And they, over time, they have deteriorated a little bit. And now fish are moving in and out. So we want to put in some more barriers, just simply replace those structures. Here in the Broads, we're at a tipping point. Mm -hmm. So it's a really exciting time to keep on pushing and keep on doing the lake restoration. We've seen today that biomanipulation can have a huge impact. 
where poor habitats can be turned into pristine environments. And very quickly, we can see the return of priority species, things such as wintering wildfowl, otters, and osprey. But we are at a tipping point. And now, with the help of the Biffer Award, the Norfolk Wildlife Trust can help ensure the survival of the iconic Broads National Park.